This is cute. This is a cute angle McDangle, but I don't like how the couch literally you can see that I'm like in the middle of upholstering it. So I'm just gonna like put my hand right here <laughs> so you can't see. I'm contemplating if I want to learn to upholster myself and become an upholstering master Lloyd or if I'm just gonna hire someone to do it. So today I wanna share with you what to do if you're feeling unaligned from your YouTube channel, like you don't feel like posting, you know, you're just not that excited about posting anymore as you were when you first started your YouTube channel. And I'm also gonna be taking you to Trader Joe's with me because I'm gonna go grocery shopping in like a couple of minutes. So you're coming with me, we're going together. And I'm gonna show you what I like to get at Trader Joe's. I'm a newbie when it comes to grocery shopping at Trader Joe's. I don't know all the goodies. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing some when I do my grocery store haul. But I do have a few gems that I always get when I go to Trader Joe's. So I'm gonna share those with you, as well as what to do if you're feeling unmotivated, ugh, if you're feeling unmotivated from posting onto YouTube. <laughs> something I need to organize later. <laughs> but I'm gonna put on my fancy smancy glasses today. Yeah, I got these from Amazon. Sure, perhaps I did. YouTube search, bougie glasses hauls. Boy, did those videos deliver because... <laughs> <laughs> this is a fit for today. She's maroon queen. Maroon hair, red lips, red nails. She's giving. Low key, I'm kind of over sweats. They're comfy and everything, but I don't want to wear them out i want to really like be put together when i go out but i'm in the middle of like morphing <laughs> my body shape my weight is fluctuating as i'm on my weight loss journey and i just this is just what works until i get my forever shape because while i'm losing weight i can just tighten this and it fits versus a lot of the pants nice pants that i've invested in like i don't fit anymore and now they fall off my waist and i guess you could wear a belt but I feel like with sweats, they just give To start off this Trader Joe's haul with all of my favorite go-tos, I'm starting it off with my spicy Thai shrimp fried rice. This is like a quick, easy, if you don't have time to cook, but you wanna still have the experience of a nice dinner. If you like spice, if you like shrimp, oh my la la loopsies. <laughs> it's so good. It comes with like a pack of, I think like seven shrimp. It's only for like one serving, at least for me. I, I don't know, I just, usually pair it with some more shrimp to make sure I have shrimp for every serving that I'm making. I also love to pair it with this naan bread. I tried it once just for the sake of trying it because I heard that they really do be packaging it straight from India and I just love trying new foods and so I tried it and I like it a lot so I eat it sometimes. I feel like when you're on a weight loss journey you shouldn't keep yourself from eating certain foods because unless you're going to keep yourself from eating it forever it's just not sustainable. You're gonna end up eating what you want anyway eventually so I might as well learn how to do it in moderation. Speaking of moderation this is a really great snack this is a really great like small meal it is literally 50 calories for the serving size i've never seen anything like it because it's actually really good i throw these into my air fryer spray a little bit of olive oil spray and dip it in soy sauce and then i tried belgian waffles for the first time this is not something i usually get but i see myself getting this from now on i honestly just got it because i saw it in a nanny and i wanted to do something special for breakfast and boy was it special it tasted so good so good. I literally made it just like that with whipped cream and strawberries and I didn't even need syrup. I usually always have syrup on my pancakes and waffles, but you know, I'm changing, I'm evolving. 
And I love how they say that they get them from Belgium. It just makes you feel so special. Just add a little special touch. Like, yeah, I got my waffles. My Belgian waffles are from Belgium. <laughs> this is tempura shrimp. This also tastes like a restaurant experience without having to spend restaurant time cooking. It's really good, really quick. You just pop it in the oven. It comes with the sauce to dip it in. Super huge shrimp on a stick. Love it. As you can see, I love shrimp. And this is what started it all. These giant corn puffs, I call it popcorn, but they're technically corn puffs. They're so good. And the serving size is so lenient for the amount like 53 pops is 140 calories this one's my favorite this is the jalapeno corn puffs it tastes it's just everything vegan and gluten-free i discovered these just recently way crunchier way more flavorful than the first two and the perfect amount of spice a girl loves her some spice and my favorite thing that I like to get from Trader Joe's is actually the flowers because they always switch up their selection. They even sometimes have plants that you can put in your house. As an avid flower buyer, I have to say Trader Joe's has the most affordable bang for your buck in terms of bouquets. And it's funner because you can create your own. I think it's a rite of passage to feel misaligned and not motivated to upload onto YouTube. And I wanted to share three things that can help you with getting re-motivated with YouTube and realigned with uploading. Because if there's no excitement, if there's no fun, what's the point, you know? When it comes to this platform, it's a journey for most of us. It's not a quick win, you know, it's not something that like you wake up and you have a ton of subscribers. It's a journey and you need to enjoy that journey. And it's really hard to enjoy that journey of uploading consistently and to show up for your YouTube channel if you're feeling misaligned from it. So I'm gonna share with you three things that will help you to realign yourself to your YouTube channel so you can feel excited about uploading again. So you can like get back in the flows because it's normal to get out of the flows. That's first and foremost. It's normal to feel unaligned from your work from time to time as an artist, no matter what type of artist you are. Same applies to writers, same applies to singers, same applies to actresses. We all go through the funk and we're about to get out of it. The first thing I would look into is your niche. Not everyone has one, but basically what a niche is, is who you're talking to and what you're talking about. Who you're making content for and what type of content are you making. So if you have a niche, I'm gonna address if you don't have a niche in a second, but if you have a niche, I'd look into if that niche is something that you wanna continue to do. When it comes to YouTube, you're allowed to change what type of content you're making. And if you're not enjoying what you're making, maybe there's another type of content that you low-key desire to make, but you're not allowing yourself to. You know, why did you start making videos about whatever you're making videos about? Look into like dissecting that and maybe changing it a bit. If it's something that you're not enjoying doing, ask yourself, what type of content do you wanna make? What type of content do you really truly wanna make? Like, what do you truly wanna talk about? That could be your new niche or a lot of people, what they do strategically is they'll change their niche to something that did well previously on their channel. So a lot of the time people will like blow up on YouTube by this one video and then they'll continue to do that video. But just because you're getting attraction through that niche doesn't necessarily mean that's what serves you. That's what makes you feel fulfilled. You may still be unaligned from that. And I think a lot of the time people ride that wave and then they just find themselves stuck again because it's not what they really want to do. So I would look at in the past, what content was your favorite to create? What can you talk about forever? That's what I changed my niche to. I could talk about self-development, mindset stuff forever. So I incorporated that and changed my ideal audience to small YouTubers because I'm a small YouTuber myself, so I get it. I've been through it, I'm going through it. I feel like with all of the channels talking about strategy, there needs to be one about the mindset because your mindset is the foundation to achieving anything in life. If you don't believe it's possible, which is why I'm here, you know, serving the gyms, giving the tips. <laughs> if you're not already subscribed, join the family, join my magical side of YouTube and press that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the monster magic. But yeah, look into your niche. <laughs> if you're feeling misaligned from your niche, I actually already have a video that goes into how to find a niche. So if you want more tips on how to find a niche, then click the I right here or check the description down below and it will be linked for you. Another way to realign yourself to your YouTube channel and feel excited about posting again is looking at your delivery. What way are you delivering content? There's so many ways to deliver content. 
You can deliver your content while vlogging. You can deliver your content while sitting down. You can deliver your content through visuals, like through stock video. I have a few videos that's just stock footage. It's the six monsters of success that I've created. That whole playlist is stock footage. There's podcast styled. There's like so many ways to deliver content. YouTube really, there is no limit. Like, of course, if you copyright, they're gonna come for you. <laughs> but if it's not a copyright issue, there's so many ways that you can deliver a message. And maybe the way that you're delivering your message isn't fulfilling you. You know, for me, I would do these sit down videos and give advice and everything. But I realized like I wasn't proud of my content. Like, yeah, I was happy that I was giving away gems and I was like, you know, sharing the knowledge and whatnot. But I felt like there's so much more to me and there's so many different ways to deliver. I'm now experimenting myself on ways to deliver content. Like how I took you guys to Trader Joe's with me. I decided to merge vlogging with giving educational content. I've done this before in a video and actually did really well. So maybe this is, this is what I'm gonna stick to, but really look at different ways to deliver content. So my biggest tip for finding the best way to deliver content is looking at what type of content you watch. What type of content captivates you? More than likely, you're gonna enjoy doing that content as well because there's something that you resonate in the content that you're watching. If you're an avid YouTube watcher, not this doesn't apply to those of you who just go onto YouTube and look up like how to do stuff. People who actually like, if you actually watch YouTube, who do you watch? How is their setup? Odds are you like it, you can do it too. It's not copying, it's inspiration. Unless you copy exactly what they're doing and you're literally like, <laughs> and you're literally trying to be them, then that's that's copying, but look for inspiration. Another thing I would suggest is to do some test footage around your house or around places that you've always wanted to film just to see how it would look. You will surprise yourself. Like, I have a lot of aesthetic things in my apartment and I've never like filmed like this. I have this couch for like a couple of months and it's so beautiful. I, I never thought to film on it because it's a project in the making. It still needs to be a poster. Low key, I'm a postering it just to make it look exactly the way that it is. <laughs> but also I'm planning on painting this gold. But I thought to myself, it's like, it's still cute though. Like it, even though it's not done, it's still doing it, you know? So <laughs> I'm experimenting with how this feels. You know, I got some flowers here to see how this looks. I may try a different angle for the next video. Just try to see like different locations. You don't necessarily have to post your test shots. Just take your camera and walk around your house and really experiment like where do you look best? Like, oh, okay, maybe I can go here. Maybe I can film right here. Really experiment not just with your where to film, but also your angles. Like, huh, maybe I should do this angle. Oh, this looks pretty cool. Maybe I can switch these angles. You know, really reflect on your delivery because maybe that is just what will make you excited to do YouTube again. Like literally, I'm so excited to see like how this comes out because I've never filmed in this area and a lot of things come into delivery. It's not even just the visuals. Look into changing up the delivery in terms of like tone of your video. You can change the music in your video to make it feel a different vibe. Maybe your vibe has shifted. Find some copyright free music that goes with your vibe you know and again if you don't know look for inspiration and that's what youtube is about youtube is a never ending i'm moving so much <gasps> my microphone is literally like <laughs> my microphone is literally like on a table i mean i'm, I'm sure you can hear my mouth i'm sure you can hear me because it's like right there but i'm supposed to be attached to my chest the thing about YouTube is that you don't need to have everything together as soon as you start. Not only is YouTube a never ending experiment, but you're a never ending experiment. You know, you're constantly changing and it's okay for your YouTube channel to too. So look at this as an adventure. Find the right music, find the right angles, find the right background, find what works for you and you will get excited again about posting onto YouTube. And if you don't have any options for a background, you know, you can always get like a green screen behind you or just like a backdrop that has like something in the backdrop. There's backdrops that literally look like a house, like you're behind like an expensive, nice kitchen. <laughs> they have all types of backgrounds on Amazon and maybe I'll do a video on like cool things to like buy to like make your videos and aesthetic. Try some things out, you just, you never know. Let me know in the comments like, what's gonna be your first experiment? Are you gonna change your niche? Are you gonna like change your delivery? But the third thing that I wanna suggest for if you're feeling misaligned from your YouTube channel is to reflect. I want you to reflect about what about uploading onto YouTube makes you feel unaligned. 
what about your channel are you not vibing with is it the fact that your camera quality sucks is it the lighting is it because you don't like to edit is it because it takes too long to edit is it because you just don't feel inspired you're not vibing with the things you're talking about anymore or is it because you just don't like youtube in general it's okay to not like being a youtuber like through trying something you learn what's for you and what's not so if you're trying to do youtube and youtube like you tried changing up a niche you tried changing up your delivery and you're just getting this feeling that maybe youtube isn't for you then reflect you know what platform do you think could be for you you may do better on tiktok or on instagram or twitter even depending on your personal preference on delivering content it may not be youtube but is it because you have imposter syndrome is it because like you're embarrassed that you don't have that many comments or likes or subscribers because that doesn't mean you don't like the youtube that means you're letting the validation of others you're letting the fact that you're not successful yet get in a way of you becoming successful that in itself is a whole never video that i will link down below if you need it <laughs> and then right here if it's not about something that needs to be fixed with your youtube channel if it's not about like your inner battles if it's just that you're not vibing with youtube try out a different platform and you don't even necessarily have to quit doing youtube to do so i'm on a lot of platforms and it's good to be on multiple platforms because you just never know you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket but what i would say is you should always have that one primary platform that you're going a little bit harder on than all the other platforms so that platform can have a better chance at growing maybe you want to change your focus and go a little bit harder at a different platform than youtube maybe you want to put some more time into your tiktok and maybe through that you'll learn through tiktok or you'll learn through pinterest or you'll learn through whatever platform you're experimenting with you'll get some inspiration from that platform to bring to your youtube channel i've gotten a lot of inspiration from tiktok to bring to my youtube channel and i've also gotten some inspiration from Instagram to bring to my YouTube channel. But you can get real creative when it comes to YouTube and you can get real creative with other platforms too. You know, if you're really not someone that likes to be in front of a camera, then maybe blogging will suit you better than vlogging. Going back to delivery, perhaps the best way to deliver content is through like a podcast style where you don't have to show your face or stock footage. But to sum it all up, if you're feeling misaligned from your YouTube channel, reevaluate your niche, reevaluate your delivery. There's so many ways to deliver content perhaps the way that you're delivering content isn't the best way for you rebecca she might be doing content like that and it's amazing but that might not be your vibe that might not be your vibe and if you're making videos like rebecca because that just looks so good like you're not giving yourself a chance to learn the best way for you to deliver content not only that but like for your audience your audience might not want to see you all professional like rebecca because you got a lot of personality and you're funny they like it when you incorporate little sketches and everything so like really look at that and then lastly reflect reflect on if youtube even is a platform that you want to be on like why did you join youtube really ask yourself that and like has that changed and if so what changed that really evaluate your feelings that you're feeling deep down about uploading consistently odds are it's probably the first two if not it could be something else it could be that it just could simply be that you you don't like being in front of a camera so every time you go in front of a camera you're just like <laughs> you feel misaligned and you just you hate it what fun is uploading onto youtube if you hate it if you aren't feeling like you're having fun with your content experiment there's so many ways to deliver a message and i'm so excited to hear it